Hello everyone, my name is The Fox. In this particular video, we're gonna be taking a look at Intel Tiger Lake gaming performance, not CPU performance, specifically gaming performance only. And largely that's all we should care about with Intel's Tiger Lake, but we'll get into a little bit more on that later. Now, Ryan has shared this video two days ago, kind of, hey, look how impressive Battlefield 5 runs on this latest Tiger Lake platform that he has available to him. He does share us a frame rate counter. He does share us that it is running DirectX 11. He shares that it's 1080p as well as a high preset. I have been able to mimic those settings in the exact scenario that he's running at on Intel's Ice Lake 1035G7 platform as well as AMD's Ryzen 5 4500U. Now, the thing that I want to talk about, you can skip ahead of this video if you want. I am going to mark the times of where I am testing what platforms and specifically Ryan's video. So you can kind of jump around and take a look at that with a little bit more info. Before we get to that, we have to talk about a few things. Now, namely, we don't know which version of Tiger Lake this is, nor do we know what TDP this is running at. Because he's not giving us that information and because he's kind of shouting from the rooftops of like, look at how good this integrated GPU is. I am going to assume that he is using the 96 execution unit of Tiger Lake, which is the high end big boy of Tiger Lake, as well as the highest TDP configuration. Now, 28 watt is what has been leaked on a lot of different sites. Um, so I am going to assume that the PL1 power limit is at 28 watt here. Now saying that, obviously Intel fudges these numbers a bit and AMD isn't safe here easy either they they fudge those numbers a bit as well um the power, power characteristics on AMD's 4500U are a lot better than Intel's Ice Lake when it comes to gaming performance as we can hit 1.5 gigahertz on 6 GPU cores at an extremely low power limit on the 41 4500U however let's kind of just digest this information a little bit okay Intel says that Ice Lake 1035G7 nominal TDP is 15 watt. This is nonsense. You are not going to get this at all, okay? I consider 25 watt to be the nominal TDP for four core because you're only going to hit this one, uh, 1050 megahertz GPU across 64 execution units uh, with some decent enough frequency on the four CPU, four CPU cores at 25 watt. Now, I have been able to, like Intel says TDP up is 25 watt. A lot of people, when they see this information, assume that 25 watt is the upper end. That is not the case. 1035G7 will use 45 watts to achieve full four core frequency and full 64 EU frequency, okay? You are not going to get full frequency, full performance out of Ice Lake at 25 watt. Now, there are diminishing returns past 25 watts, so going over 25 watt doesn't really net you a lot of performance because largely we're going to be spending a lot of power in trying to get those CPUs up to frequency. You don't need that much when we're talking about GPU performance because we're GPU bound a lot of times on integrated graphics. We are largely GPU bound often. Even on Tiger Lake, we are still going to be GPU bound. There is no doubting this. Things are getting better, but it's still there is still a giant mismatch with regards to power. Intel's Ice Lake Sunny Cove CPUs are exceptionally very good um, for what they are. Like at 25 watt for core, we are super performant. Um, when we take a look, we're like, you know, uh, uh, what is it, Cabby Lake performance at quad core uh, within like at frequency. Like so. At 3.3 gigahertz on Intel's Ice Lake, we destroy KB, uh, KB Lake at 3.3 gigahertz. And we're doing it at ex an exceptionally smaller wattage level. So Sunny Cove is really good. However, the GPU on Ice Lake is absolute garbage and is why Intel is leaving it. Now, AMD's performance in GPU is also imbalance because they just stacked a bunch of cpu cores on here and largely we will waste a lot of power pushing a lot of cpu uh, a lot of power to the cpu as opposed to the gpu now we only need basically what you need to know here is that 4500u at 18 watts of uh, tdp will largely be what we need to get to get 1.5 gigahertz on the gpu cores and a reasonable cpu frequency and that will the CPU will then match the amount of power needed 
that the GPU is outputting to get the respectable frame rate that you need. Any more CPU power, you're, you'll get small, incredibly small performance improvements for a lot of wasted power. It is just not worth it. Now, when we compare 4500U to 1035 uh, G7, the AMD's 5 4500U beats Ice Lake with even like when we're talking about uh, 4500U will use 18 watts, whereas at 25 watt, we will still get less performance than AMD's 4500U. So we're using seven watts more power and AMD's platform generally will be, the 4500U will be generally 10 to 20% more performance. There are some outliers here, like Forza 4 will get double the performance at 18 watt, double. So instead of 30 frames a second at 25 watt, we'll get 60 frames a second at 18 watt. Now that's an outlier game, um, but I have tested it myself, and that's a, a whole other bag of noodles of a review that I have to do for uh, the L Lenovo Flex 5 that I have to do, uh, and also just touching base on the Ryzen 5 4500U. Now, we've gone in a few minutes here, and I've been talking about this at length, but I wanted to extremely stress the point that this video that Ryan Shrout is sharing with us does not tell us execution units or TDP, the wattage used. I am basically saying anticipate that this is the 96 EU version and it's running at 28 watt TDP. Okay, let's do that. So now, without further ado, let's take a look at Ryan's video. See, I've got Battlefield 5 fired up, now running at full 1080. Okay, so notice here that he is saying 1080p, and notice the field of view is at 55. And indeed, it's at high quality. So now, I have mimicked these settings, and I've gotten to the same scene as him. Uh, and we'll kind of talk about that in a minute, but just let's take a look at the rest of Ryan's video. Preset. And as you would Battlefield, the videos are out setting. Frame rate is great, hovering at or above 30 frames per second here on a thin and light notebook using fully integrated graphics. And this is the type of uh, performance and experience you'll be looking forward to seeing on Tiger Lake later this year. All right, so that actually is pretty decent performance. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you that same sequence, but I'm going to show it to you on Intel's Ice Lake, the 1035 G7. Okay, so this is me playing. Now I'm playing here on the GPD Win Max. This is a platform that I have, and I've been kind of demoing it a lot lately. Up here on the top left, you can see that our current frame rate is around 15 frames a second. So we're basically half the frame rate that Ryan Shrout's Tiger Lake video is showing. But you can also see my CPU package power. My power limit one is at 25 watt. I'm not showing you my power limit two. That is at 30 watt. And that's why you see this greater power usage right here is because PL2 is currently active right now. You can also see the GPU clock right here. We're at 950 megahertz. We do some uh, sometimes get to 1050 megahertz, but we kind of largely hit around one gigahertz. Here you can see I am 1080p as well as 55 uh, FOV, and I am high preset settings. So Tiger Lake is twice the performance. G Graphics 96 EUs are twice the performance of Intel's Ice Lake, which is great from this particular demo. Will that be for every game, for every benchmark? It's not entirely clear. Leaked benchmarks that have been around showing off Fire Strike as well as Time Spy. Uh, when I test against at 25 watt and 28 watt, I am showing more of a 60% improvement uh, on Tiger Lake. So it's anywhere between two times the performance at the same wattage or 60% improvement. Um, that is basically all the information that I have right now. But let's go ahead and take a look at AMD's 4500U platform. Okay, so now, right now, you can see that performance is around the same as Ice Lake. However, there's one thing that I want you to point out here the total system power. Right now, I am purposefully putting this at a lower power. The total system power, this is not just uh, the SOC itself. This is for the RAM, the system on a chip, the display, Wi-Fi, everything. This is for the entire machine running, not just the chip. You can see these other values here that are, are um, being shown. This is something that I'm still trying to figure out. You can see CPU core power says 
12.7 watt. It's pretty hard to determine what the power level is from AMD, to be honest, uh, which is why I've largely looked at this total system power as a better metric because uh, you can see right here we're using 21 watt right now. This includes everything. So basically we're at 18 watt TDP for the SOC itself. Um, and we're getting the same performance as Ice Lake, uh, but Ice Lake is using almost double the power. Um, so when we take a look at AMD's 4500U inside the same power envelope, AMD's platform is already very, very close to Tiger Lake. Tiger Lake might be beating it. Um, I don't have a 4800U to kind of better look at this. But again, you can see I'm pointing towards this different stuff. And you can see total system power right now is at 24 watt. All right, so here I am taking a look at boosting the power on AMD's 4500U platform. We are getting slightly better performance here at the cost of increasing frequency on the CPU itself. You can see right here that I am now getting 4 gigahertz on CPU. This is basically, I'm demonstrating here that we will get slightly better performance only because I am gunning the CPUs. And the GPU is largely saying the same. If you look right here, we're at 1.5 gigahertz. 4500U is hampered by the fact that it's GPU clock and GPU cores, I have so little of them, and they're limited to 1.5 gigahertz, that I'm not able to actually achieve better performance. The only reason that I'm getting slightly better performance here, will actually go up to 21 watt, is because I'm being super, super wasteful on the CPU. Like, I'm gunning the CPUs here just to get five extra FPS. This is not a valid way to look at this. Um, I am just including it just so that you can see it. Uh, the previous benchmark of the AMD platform where total system power was around 15 watt, but we were getting 15 frames a second, is more a valid metric because we were still using 1.5 gigahertz on the GPU, but our CPU core was half of what was available to us. I am just showing this to you just so that it's available to you, just so that we can get a clear understanding of what's actually happening. Okay, so when we take a look at 4500U, um, the ratio of power is largely stacked towards CPU a lot. Um, the GPU will reach max frequency early on at very, very low power. So when we compare Tiger Lake to AMD, um, you can see that if we just had more GPU cores and higher frequency, that largely we would be competing against Tiger Lake probably within the same TDP. Um, if we take a look at 30 watt, AMD might already be where Tiger Lake is. It's just that AMD has designed their platform to be CPU heavy like crazy. Um, so that's basically it. Um, when we take a look at AMD's next platform, hopefully they are using RDNA 2. I don't know if Intel is going to be able to compete successfully against AMD when AMD's next APU series comes out. If AMD uses the same Vega platform, Tiger Lake will actually be performant. But if AMD goes to RDNA 2 and actually boosts, if they make a chip that doesn't have eight CPU cores and just has four CPU cores and they went more GPU cores, we're going to see an APU that is more properly balanced performance-wise for gaming. And it will crush Tiger Lake. I, I mean, just looking at where we are, um, Tiger Lake will win only because this platform seems to be better distributed towards a more gaming centric. We have only four CPU cores that are very, very performant and more GPU cores that are better performing than Intel's Ice Lake chip. Whereas AMD just seems to be throwing a ton of CPU at, at people, which I guess is what people want, but from a gaming performance, um, they are really, I don't know why they're doing so little. It is curious to me because they are basically shackling a beast. Um, perhaps they're waiting for Intel to basically release Tiger Lake for them to just release RDNA 2 and be ahead of them again. Uh, it's going to be curious, but I don't think that Intel's next iteration is actually going to beat AMD, especially if AMD basically pulls their <laughs> pulls their actual muscle out. 
Right now, they're just kind of flexing that they can do what they're doing. Uh, so that has been my look at Tiger Lake. Um, again, use the benchmark uh, time timestamps uh, in the description field to kind of jump around to see what's going on there. But largely, um, we are still speculating on what Tiger Lake is here. I am saying that this is the 96 execution unit version of Tiger Lake, as well as being running at 28 watt. It is looking, if we were to look at it through that lens, it is double the gaming performance of Intel's Ice Lake, which is great, but if AMD flexes and actually makes, puts more GPU power into their AMD stuff, uh, Intel is not going to beat them. <laughs> so basically that's a quick look just to kind of give a better understanding of what we're looking at here, what you should expect from Tiger Lake, um, and hopefully what we can expect from AMD, because right now AMD is kind of just flexing a bit on CPUs. Anywho, that's my look at Tiger Lake. Hopefully it's been informative for you. That's it, guys. As always, thank you for your time, and thanks for watching.